Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a scrolling jig. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out this material and start with tapering this piece first. And then we'll get into some of the specifics. We're gonna draw down a one-sided taper if we can. Or an asymmetrical taper is what we're trying to do. And we're going to draw this down to roughly quarter inch or six mil. Keeping the same width as the original parent bar stock. Right. There we go. So we've got a one-sided taper or an asymmetrical taper. Not not a symmetrical taper, but an asymmetrical taper. And now we're going to heat that up and we're going to start scrolling it. So the starting stock size that I'm working with is one inch wide by half inch thick or 25 mil by 12.5 mil thick for those of you across the pond and we just drew down that piece about three inches long by one inch wide by quarter inch thick or 75 mil long by 25 mil wide by six mil thick out at the end and now we're going to go ahead I'm going to dress this up just a bit more because I think it needs just a little more dressing just because I'm kind of a fanatic about that. We're going to dress the width here, make sure it stays at that one inch mark. We want it to stay at that one inch and just have a nice clean smooth taper. So again, we're making a scrolling jig. I'm gonna stick this back in the fire here. Bring it back up to heat, and we'll begin to scroll it. So I'll take this moment to thank you for joining us today here and joining me in the shop. Thank you for sharing my videos around when you like them. Uh, it greatly helps this channel grow. So remember to do that and share this video with your friends if you find it helpful. I hope you'll find it helpful of this simple little scroll jig. Now let's get into some of the technicalities about making a scroll jig. First of all, you need to be able to make a good scroll with just hand-eye coordination first before attempting to make a scroll jig. Because your scroll will never be any better than the jig that, that you make. So if you can't make a good scroll, you're going to make a really lousy jig, if that makes sense to you. So if you don't know how to make a good scroll, you're going to make a lousy jig for making scrolls. So the jig will not help you get any better at making scrolls. Jigs are meant to help you make repeatable scrolls quicker. They are not a substitute for good forging practice. All right, so there we go. There's the start of our scroll. And we're gonna continue this right on around. Now, as I was hammering on that, I wasn't, I didn't tell you what I was, uh, I didn't tell you what I was doing. So I took that one-sided taper and I made that roll down. And what that does is that helps that get an increasingly tight arc right there at the start of that ribbon scroll. And basically that's what we're making. We're making a ribbon in scroll right now that we're gonna end up turning into a jig. Now I first saw a very similar scroll like this in a museum catalog a long, long time ago. It was just like a 
one of those, it's like a Sears and Roebuck type catalog. I saw a scroll jig like this. My landlord and my mentor, Raymond, had it. And uh, anyways, it's been probably eight, nine years ago now uh, that it's getting that I saw this thing. I'm like, hey, when I actually get good at forging someday, I'm gonna try making one of those. And so here we are making one for YouTube. So we're gonna bring this up to heat and we're gonna to continue to scroll this. So when we're making this jig, we want to take and continually to put more material out each time. So we're taking more, longer and longer heats. So you take a short heat at the beginning to get your first little finial rolled. Then you keep moving it out a little longer, a little longer, a little longer each time. And that's what gives you that nice Archimedes spiral or scroll type deal. And it looks really, really pleasing to the eye. You don't have to hit this with a hammer. You can hit this with a rawhide mallet or a wooden mallet if you don't want to take and beat up anything. Uh, but if you're doing it right, your hammer blow shouldn't be connecting with anything like the anvil surface or hammering against the anvil in any way. They should be just pushing the material down around the outside of your anvil. So now we got it hot enough again. Now we're gonna just continue to push even more material. Hit way out there on the end where it turns up like a 90 degrees. And then we're gonna tilt just like that as we go around. And that's gonna start our scroll looking really nice. The other secret about scrolls or doing scroll jigs, you do not want to do too much at once. Don't get carried away because that's when, you that's when you accomplish nothing but flat spots. We don't want any flat spots in this scroll. We want it to be one nice smooth spiral. So now I'm adjusting the fire to take an even longer heat. On thick material like this, I like to go double. So if I had a three inch heat when I started, my next heat will be six inches. My next heat after that will be nine inches or it will be almost a full 12 inches and so on and so forth. I keep adding another three inches or so of heat onto that end number to take and get that length at the right ratio and proportion. You also want the hottest part of your scroll to be where you need it to bend the most and then slowly taper off to into the next portions of the scroll. So once you've got it figured out what size scroll you're needing, you make your scroll first. You make your jig to fit the scroll that you need to be made again and again and again. Then you take that and you go ahead and fit this. You make the scroll and then you can make whatever size scroll you want. You can make that same size scroll again and again and again and again. And it works out just marvelously that way. Here we go. I'm getting hot. Again, double the length. Hit way out on the end, standing it right up. Get it to scroll right on around. There are a lot of people who don't like doing scrolls. They find it very difficult. I, for one, think that scrolls are one of those things that everybody should learn to do because they can enhance your iron work like you wouldn't believe. So there we go, so we're getting that going. I'm gonna go around just a bit more. So again, I'm gonna nearly double the length here again because I want this to go around some more. So every time I'm trying to get a longer heat on this piece. And when making a jig, you always wanna start with more material than you think you'll need. You don't wanna run out. So this piece here was about four foot long or so. Um, excuse me, I don't know what that is over in metric. Uh, but again, it was about four foot long. <coughs> excuse me. And that's, that's about what you want. What, what is like two meters or something like that in metric? Comment down below what four foot is in metric. Anyways. And it's gonna take up a good bit of this by the time we make the end that goes through here. So this is also, I would like to point out, this is a no weld jig. 
we're not going to weld anything on this. And that's the reason for the thickness of the material, the way it is. So since this is half inch by one, or 12.5 by 25 mil, when we double it back on itself later on to fit through the hardy hole, it will make a one by one or 25 mil by 25 mil square hardy shank to fit in our hardy hole. If you need something different or if you need some other type of uh, dimension for your hardy hole, just add that to your, your width dimension and whatever half of that thickness is to your thickness dimension and it will come out spot on every time. As a minimum for your scroll jig, you want it to be double of the thickness of the scroll to be bent. So this way it'll hold up. So now, out even further. Just getting a big scroll going. Always turn it to look at it. Make sure it's doing good. It's looking good. Tighten that bend up a little bit. We're just getting it straight. As you can see, I'm not really wailing on this thing. I'm just kind of pushing the material around with the hammer. Okay, give it just a little short brushing. Without wasting any more time, I'll go ahead and throw it back in the fire. So you guys can see how that's working right on around. So again, we're doubling that length. We're doubling that length again. So this way we can get an even longer crook on it and right on around round we go. This will bring me into another point. You can make one scroll jig and a lot of times you can get away with, as long as you didn't make it too big and open or too tight and small, a lot of times you can take and get away with just using one portion of that scroll jig. So I can make from scrolls as large as what this jig is, down, I can make them down to just as small as the first portion of that scroll jig and get repeatability that way. So you don't have to make necessarily a new jig for every size scroll that you want. Although that is the best practice, you can get by with one size scroll kind of fits a multitude of scrolls within a project. If you design it properly, uh, you can go a little each way. You just have to put some chalk marks on stuff. I'll go into showing you how to use this jig in another video um, and what I mean by that when we get into some more advanced level projects. Getting a little extra heat on this. We're almost where we need to be. I'm going to move this out of the way. Thank you all for sticking with me in this video. I know these videos, these live videos have been getting longer, um, but most of my dedicated followers uh, that watch on a regular basis know the secret passcode by this time. I say something, just say, getting jiggy with it. Ha <laughs> ha! Don't sing the song in the comment section. Just say, getting jiggy with it. <laughs> oh, anyways, um, yes, but I like demonstrating in live in real time so you get a real feel of what time it takes. Obviously, I could just edit all this junk out and say, look, ain't I great? I know how to make a scroll jig. But I figured this makes it pretty entertaining. So, okay, got a good long heat on it. Again, out over the edge of the anvil. We're getting that arc going. Hammering way off the edge there. So now this is going pretty good, but I'm developing a flat area here that I want to tighten up before I go any further with this. 
So I'm gonna put it back in the fire, but kind of stand it up like this, because I need to get more heat into just that area. So I'll hold that while I do that. Ah, come on you. It's not really forging unless you drop forging at least once during the day, huh? All right, get this going here. There we go. So we'll get that stood in there. This shape's gonna start getting kind of awkward on you. That's okay. It happens. Again, you want to watch for those flat spots developing. We don't want a bunch of flats on this thing. <coughs> so once I get that heat up, heated up enough to just pull a little bit, kind of just work that a little bit, we'll be good to go. Okay, on to our next portion. So here we go. That should be good and warm. Get that flat out of there. There we go. Another secret to good scroll work is never hammer in the same place twice. That's usually bad form. It'll leave flat spots with your hammer blows, each hammer blow. All right. I'm gonna brush this down real quick. Let it cool for a second. And I'm gonna quench off everything that is not where I need it to bend. So where I need it to bend now <coughs> is I need to put a 90 degree bend on it right about in here. Right at just maybe two inches or 50 mil away from where that is there, the end of your scroll, I need to put a bend there. This is an arbitrary measurement. You can do what you like with it. But I'm gonna cool off everything except for that area in the slack tub. Okay. Because we don't wanna distort this beautiful scroll we just made. Now I'm gonna heat that area up and keep the scroll out of the fire. Now I'm working with coke, so this is gonna tend to take and bend a little longer on the radius because I've got the fire really spread out now. One of the good things, one of the best things to probably do were to be to take and let the fire cool down so this way I'm being more localized with my heat. But we're just gonna roll with it since the camera's rolling here. Okay, so I'm going to be right back with you. My camera right here, it has a recording limit, so I'm going to go ahead and stop now. When this is at heat, I will bring it right back, and we'll just continue as usual. There just won't be this dead space. So this piece is up to heat now. Bring it out, and now we're going to go ahead and bend that piece at a right angle. This is going to feel awkward. It's going to want to do some weird twisting on you. Don't worry. We're just trying to hammer this nice and square. Hammer straight down on top. Again, it doesn't want to be this square, but we're going to make it that way. You don't even have to invest a ton of time. into making that a perfectly square outside corner. I wouldn't worry about that. Just make sure your scroll is square to the anvil face is all. Okay, now we have a contraption that looks like this. Give it a little brush. And now that that's all good to go, 
Now we can cool off this end. I'm gonna go ahead and cool off this end completely. I'm gonna dump it down the slack tub. So here comes the next part. You've got some choices that you need to take and make. The choices are simply as this. You can make the piece where you just double it back on itself and it's fairly short and stubby, or you can make the piece where when you double it back on itself, it goes all the way through the anvil itself and you can drive a pin in underneath to hold that thing tight to the anvil surface. And what happens is when you drive the pin, it opens up like that inside the hardy hole and it stops it from coming back out. I'm going to do basically just where I bend it back in on itself. I don't need it to be that long. Uh, and here inside Olga, you guys can't see this, but this actually goes down and it's slightly crooked when it tapers down in here. And so it's not a perfectly straight square hole all the way down. So I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm gonna make it roughly about four and a half inches long. So that means I need to be about nine inches long in total, or so let's say five inches for easy math, right? So that's gonna be 125 mil long. And then I'm gonna double that. So I need a total of 10 inches in length or 250 millimeters total from that 90 degree bend in order to bend it back on itself and for it to fit perfectly in this hardy hole. So I will let that cool down there. I hope you guys are seeing what happens here is we don't need to take and do anything else. You don't have, you don't have to have any other specialized tooling to be able to do this. Now, Say you don't like to do this at the anvil, say you don't like having the hardy hole or be able to do scroll work at the anvil, that's not really your thing. You would much rather this be at the vise. All you've got to do is go ahead and lob it off wherever it's comfortable and then this will clamp in the vise just fine for you and you can set it up to do your scroll work. So you could skip this next step if you're not going to the anvil. But we, however, are going to take and do this next step because I want it to go in the anvil instead of the vise. So let me get my soapstone. I'm gonna measure from that bottom corner or from where it's gonna sit against the anvil. Use this little hook rule here just for kicks. And I'm gonna mark it off at 10 inches or 250 mil. This will give me about the right amount of length to take and double it back on itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at this one more time and I'm gonna go ahead and mark it at that 125 mil or five inch mark or halfway in between the distance. So there you go. That's how we lay that out. Very quickly, we will find something to mark off that furthest destination so we know where to come out and cut it. This is going to want to fool around with you, so you might have to find, you might have some pr trouble bracing it here. Give me a second. There we go. We're just going to put a cold chisel mark all the way across this piece where I want to cut this off. Again, there's no special, you could eyeball this with a hardy or a hot cut, and there's no problem in doing that. And then I'm also going to put a line or a crease right where I'm going to bend this as well just so this way I know where that's at, so I can find that easily enough in the fire, just like so. And that cold chisel mark's just there, literally just for a reference. It's just for a reference point, so hopefully you all can see that just fine in the camera. So we've got one line, cutoff line, one line, the bin line. So let's get this back hot again. Turn on our blower. and we'll bring that up to heat. As 
So we'll bring that up to heat and then we'll bend it. So I'll go ahead and clip out of here again. I'll go ahead and clip out again and come back to you as soon as that's hot and we're ready to cut it off or and do the bend. Okay, so we've got this piece hot, and now it's time to take and do our bin. I went ahead and cut it off there, and now we're ready to take and bend it up. So you wanna, you wanna decide which orientation you want this to bend. I like to bend it away where the anvil, where the scroll work is up. I'm gonna find that edge. Work that down a little bit, and then we're going to hammer this straight back. Now you will have to work out this joint somewhat because it's going to be a little thicker. You're trying to upset it. So we need to work that back down to its original parent bar thickness. And you want to make sure it fits in the hole. As long as it fits in the hole, you're doing good. Hammer that back straight. Take that back. Straight on down it goes. Take any bows or bends out of it that you need to do. And hammer it to suit. And there you go. You've made yourself a scroll jig. Now you might be asking yourself, but Roy, you just put this piece in danger of never coming out of that hardy hole. And no, I didn't really. So what I've done here is I've hot fitted it to the hardy hole and as it cools, it'll contract and it'll come out of the hardy hole a lot easier. So if you do happen to get a tool stuck say in the hardy hole, don't hammer on it while it's hot. This is just a quick tip. Let it cool down sufficiently, then pull it out and it'll come out a lot easier, just like so, than if while it was still hot, you started beating on it from underneath and upsetting it into that hardy hole. So we don't want that. Right down, really nice, good fit all the way around. And now that's ready to go. So I've got a piece of one inch quarter by one flat stock now in the forge. We're going to go ahead and cool, heat this up a bit. And I'm going to show you how this works. Now this can work to a great deal if you have a pair of uh, Visa grips to do your clamping with. If you don't have a pair of Visa grips, you can do it with scrolling tongs or basically any sort of tong that can grip both the thickness of your material and the thickness of the scroll jig itself. So you can hold it like that and start your scroll around. And once you start the scroll around, the rest will follow. So I'm just going to use these pair of Farrier kind of style tongs that'll fit this just fine. And now we're going to grip. I'm coming out at an angle a bit. That's okay. We're going to drop it down and re-grip here in just a second. And grip again. And right on around I go, around my form. We'll go ahead and heat that up. Now ideally you would have 
you would have dressed this ribbon in with something. I just want to take and show you guys how this works before I end the video. So go ahead and heat this whole piece up again, keeping to the same strategy. You want double the length every time to go back in the fire to be heated up for the scroll and we will go right back on around until we get this scroll and now that will produce me continuous results exactly the same each and every time so we'll heat this up just a bit more and we'll go with that so let me back you guys up just a bit so you can see it a little better as I go around Heat that up. So anyways, while this is getting hot and I'm about to take and do this last little bit, again, thank you so much for watching this video today. Uh, if you made it this far, I greatly appreciate you. Remember to share this video if you found it helpful and informative with your friends. And if you'd like to support this channel financially, a great way of you doing that is checking out our website over at blacksmithpdfs.com. It's a great place where you can learn. It's a great place that we've started over there to take and help blacksmiths start their blacksmithing careers and other things. And uh, we hope you will join us over there. Maybe consider purchasing a download, um, whether it be a power hammer plan or an ebook around a blacksmithing business. Those are all over there to create it to take and help you with your forging needs. So as you can see, it just keeps going around. Now we'll just get this last piece here just so you guys can see how it works. Once you get that initial bend started, you don't need to take and clamp this. So again, thank you for your support in any way that you do it, whether you share the videos, like the videos, comment, or if you support us financially at our website, blacksmithps.com. Again, just thank you so much for your support in whatever capacity that may take form. We really do appreciate it. And we do appreciate each and every last one of our subscribers on this channel. So without further ado, God bless you, and we'll catch you all on the next one.